There will be a wave of evictions and foreclosures in the coming months on, as this pandemic rages on, because there's nothing we can do to change the trajectory of the pandemic in the next several months. Hey guys, welcome back. I really did not plan on doing another video so soon or before I got the bigger project I'm working on out. But um, things are going to have to change as far as I think I'm going to have to turn what I'm doing into a three, four, five part little series. Um, that way you're not sitting there trying to watch a two hour long video from me. Um, no one's going to do that. So I'll just do us all a favor and put it out in parts. But there's some things I just have to talk about because I am completely disgusted with the Biden administration already. Big shocker. I hate to be the one that has to break the news to the media, but the Biden family is not attractive. We do not need to sit here and pretend like they are. What does that do for anybody to lie to these people? Convince them, I guess, that they're fashionable or attractive. They're not. They did this with Michelle Obama. Like, you don't have to go out of your way to call these people ugly. Maybe sometimes. But you don't have to try to convince yourself and the rest of America that these people are attractive when they're not. It accomplishes nothing. It's just a lie. Please stop doing it. I'm sick of it already. Troops keep getting called into DC for who knows what reason. They just keep flooding them in there. And they said it was for inauguration, but then like more troops came after that. So I don't know what's going on. But there are some that got a message out, despite not having cell service, I guess, that they are all uh, in a parking garage and have been for almost a week. They have, I think, one bathroom with two stalls, one power outlet. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. Essentially forced to rest in this cold nearby parking garage without internet reception, only one electrical outlet, and a bathroom with two stalls for 5,000 troops. That's good, that's great. I'm, I'm glad that Congress really is taking care of the people who are there sworn to protect them uh, on what could have been a very dangerous day. And that's the thing. So an anonymous guard made this statement saying, essentially what you're saying, yesterday, dozens of senators and congressmen walked down our lines taking photos, shaking our hands, thanking us for our service. Within 24 hours, they had no further use for us, banished us to the corner of a parking garage, and we feel incredibly betrayed. Now, we're hearing the reasoning. D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser said that the removals were over budget issues, saying D.C. residents wouldn't cover the hotel bills. That's, that's totally, that's, that's complete, you know what I want to say. Uh, there are luxury hotels all around that area. There's a Ritz, there's a St. Regis, uh, many luxury hotels. There's that, the beautiful Trump Hotel mm -hmm. as well. And I'm, Conversation is so heated online, not just by politicians, but by everyday people like you and I saying, how is this possible? We yeah. saw celebrities taking selfies with the National Guard. Everybody was A-Rod and J-Lo. Everyone and was. Lady Gaga. Chrissy Ooh, Teigen. Uh, Madison Cawthorn, I talked about him recently, and I told you I think he's a good one. And he's proven me right so far. He went down and actually did something. I know, it's fucking shocking that someone in Congress would actually go and get something done. It's amazing to see someone actually do something for once. He went down, um, he offered them to stay um, in his office and fed them. Um, Man, yeah, you want to have fun here. Um, what's, what's the vision? Oh, hey, well, hey, I'm, I'm talking to you guys. Yeah, that's an honor to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you guys. I heard you guys got kicked downstairs. We sure did. All right, man. You mind if I talk to you guys? Absolutely. Hey, everybody, you guys are paying attention? Everybody's body's in Chicago. He's a wolf, so yeah, thank you very much. Hey, man. 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 Hey, a 20 second clip and I'll put it in. So I don't know how true that is, but I can see him doing that. That's the kind of guy he is. 
When Trump took on Big Pharma last year, like really went at him hard. Today I'm taking a bold and historic, very dramatic action to reduce the price of prescription drugs for American patients and American seniors. Previous administrations did nothing, absolutely nothing, as drug lobbyists, special interests, and foreign countries fairly ripped off our citizens. I had a bad feeling about it, the way he was talking about it, the way his daughter talked about it. Uh, it made me nervous as the repercussions of what he was doing. And clearly, uh, clearly Biden's working for them, you know, who knows how much they paid him. But, you know, he's been fear-mongering about COVID this whole time, pushing for a vaccine, pushing, you know, for everyone possible to get it. Now he just undid an executive order that lowered insulin prices. Who does that serve? Because it's not, it's not American citizens who benefit from that. Also, Hank Aaron, he got the vaccine a week and a half, two weeks ago, and he's dead now. He was old. But it's just interesting, just putting it out there. But officials have not re made reports on what his cause of death actually is at this point. But yes, Hank Aaron's last public appearance was one of caring and compassion, getting the COVID-19 vaccine, hoping to send a message to black Americans that the shots are safe. The baseball legend got the Moderna vaccine in Atlanta on January 5th, along with other civil rights leaders. Many black people have concerns about the vaccine because of the infamous Tuskegee experiment. Aaron said publicly at the time, the vaccine is just a small thing that he can do to raise awareness. Iraq got a double bombing um, a day or two ago, and the government there actually admitted that they had some idea what was going to happen, but they don't have the training or weapons necessary to basically do anything about it. It was a sunny, cold winter day when two suicide bombers targeted the busy market on Thursday morning, killing more than 30 people and wounding more than 100. Hassan has a shop tucked away in a side street and escaped the carnage. It happened at 9.30 in the morning. There was a young man. He came here and pretended as if he fell down. He wore a big jacket. He asked for help. More than four men came to get him. When they tried to carry him, he detonated the bomb. As people ran to help the wounded, a second bomb exploded. The blast comes just a week after the U.S. confirmed it had cut its troop levels in Iraq to 2,500, citing gains in the fight against ISIL. In recent years, ISIL sleeper cells have resorted mainly to guerrilla-style tactics, targeting security forces and civilians in rural areas, but have been unable to pull off major attacks in towns. Working with military and security officials, I now know we are still lacking training, experts, weapons, and also the need to share intelligence. Why am I saying this? Simply because ISIL operatives or certain ISIL rings are still active and on the move in Iraq, namely in Alanbar and at the outskirts of Karkuk and Mosul. ISIL and some terrorist groups still have a firm presence in Iraq. Suicide attacks were common in Baghdad before ISIL's territorial defeat in 2017, but there have been few since then. They can't do shit about it, apparently, and don't really seem like they want to even try to. Um, I think it's like 32, 34 people died, like 100 people injured, and it's the first time this has happened in three years, and ISIS is uh, claiming they did it. It's not shocking at this point. People didn't really need to be told that their government um, is inept, but um, after they did, a bunch of uh, chaos kind of ensued, and it has a very familiar feeling to uh, some things that go on in America these days. Their anger fueled by the government's inability to prevent an attack, it says it knew was coming. The government has promised to investigate the bombings, but few here expect anyone will be brought to justice. Thank you guys so much for watching and please be patient with me on the projects I'm working on. I want to get it right. I want to get it perfect. I want it to be accurate as can be. So I'm looking forward to you guys seeing part one of that. I have no fucking clue when it's going to be out realistically. I'm realizing that now. So I'll see you next time I have some shit to rant about. Thank you for watching guys. Bye.